When you're sitting here focused on the breath, you're trying to create a solid space for the mind, a solid space for yourself. The word self here is important to understand. We hear so much about not self, not self, when we read about the Buddhist teachings. It's not that he says there is no self. And it's not the case that every sense of self is bad. After all, you want to create a self that you can rely on. There's a Pali phrase, atta hiata no nato. The self is its own mainstay. If there were no self, you wouldn't have any mainstay. Our, what the Buddha is talking about is our sense of self, where we create the dividing line. between the things that we want to hold on to, the things we want to claim as ours, and the things that we want to let go. And this is a process we're doing all the time. The Buddha simply wants us to learn how to do it well. Like right now, as you're meditating, you want to focus on the sense of self that says, this is something I want to do because it's for my own good in the long term, and I'm capable of doing it. You want the self that's responsible. You want the self that's confident. As for any thoughts that say, I can't do this, or I don't feel like it, that kind of self you can let go. You don't have to identify with it. In other words, it's not the case that everything that comes into your mind is yours. You get to choose. Think of the mind as being like a committee, lots of different opinions in there. And just because somebody's opinion has been expressed doesn't mean the committee has to take it as their policy. And so as you're meditating, you're trying to establish this good, healthy sense of self so that it doesn't get pushed around. What are the things that tend to push it around? Well, the things inside include distracting thoughts and feelings of pain. So this afternoon I'd like to talk about feelings of pain. You're sitting here focused on the breath and begin to realize there's a pain in the knee or a pain in your, in your waist. And what do you do? The first thing is you don't pay attention to the pain. In other words, you don't focus your attention there. You focus on the parts of the body that you can make comfortable. Because the way you breathe can have an influence on how the different parts of the body feel. So try to notice which parts of the body feel good. The mind tends to focus immediately on the pain, but there may be parts of the body all around it that are perfectly fine. Learn how to focus on those. And when you think of the breath, just think of it as an energy flow through the body. If you're not sure about where you can feel it, just hold your arm out for a second without touching anything. How do you know that there's an arm there? It's not touching anything at all. There's a sense of the energy in the arm itself. That's the breath. And then think of the same energy in the other arm, in, the, uh, in both legs, in the different parts of the body. That'll help give you a sense of the breath. And then you may begin to notice there are different parts of the body that tense up a little bit when you breathe in, or get squeezed when you breathe out. Okay, they don't have to tense up, they don't have to be squeezed. So think of the breath coming in without any tension, the breath going out without any squeezing. And you find that different parts of the body begin to open up and feel a greater sense of refreshment, a greater sense of ease right here in the present moment. Okay, focus on those. When they feel solid, when they feel secure, then think of the good energy in those parts of the body going through the, the spot where there's pain. After all, the breath can go through anything in the body. Your body is made out of atoms, and the atoms are mainly, mainly space. So don't think of the pain as a wall. It has its spaces between which the, the breath can flow. And 
sometimes when you do this, the whole pain goes away. Or even if it doesn't go away, then you, you still feel a lot better around the pain. You begin to see the pain was not as solid as you thought it was. And this is the point where you actually can go in and look at the pain itself to see exactly what is this sensation of pain that drives you so much as you go through life. The first thing you might ask is, is the pain the same thing as the knee, supposing that it's in the knee? And you see that it really isn't. The pain is its like it's on one frequency and your body is on another. The body is made out of a the properties of solidity, liquidity, energy, warmth, in other words, earth, wind, water, and fire. But the pain is something else entirely. Even though it's in the same place, it's a different frequency. It's like the radio waves going through the air right now. We've got different stations from Los Angeles, San Diego, Tijuana, all going through the same spot right here. And if you get a radio that can make the distinction between the different frequencies, you can pick out whichever frequency you want. So in the same way, try to stay with the frequency of breath or frequency of solidity. And the pain is something else. Make sure that you don't equate the solidity with the pain. They are two different things. Solidity is a quality of the body. The pain flits around. When you can see that the pain is not solid, it's not monolithic, then you can ask yourself, when these moments of pain arise and then pass away, when they arise, do they come at you or are they going away? If you think they're coming at you, then you start gathering them up and you feel oppressed. But if you think of them going away, going away, going away, as soon as you see them, they're going away. The pain is not so oppressive. It's like sitting in the back of an old-fashioned station wagon, facing back. As you ride along the road, anything that comes into the range of your vision is going away from you. As soon as you see it, it's going away. Years back I was getting a treatment from a Chinese doctor in Singapore. He was going to work on my back. First he rubbed oil into it. First the oil felt good, but he kept rubbing and rubbing until it got a little bit red and sore. And then he took these two bamboo sticks that he turned into whisks and started beating my back. And it looked like he wasn't going to stop. My first thought was, you know, what bad karma have I done? Then I realized, here's an opportunity to understand pain. So I watched it and began to realize if I had the perception that the pain was coming at me, it felt oppressive. If I had the perception it was going away from me, it was okay. So I held that perception in mind, and I was able to get through the session okay. We can use the same perception with any pain that's in the body. You realize it's coming and going in little, little moments of pain. They may come very quickly, but think of each moment as going away, going away, going away. And you find that the perception that you had, that the pain was coming at you, or even you might even have thought in some subconscious part of the mind that it had a bad intention toward you, you realize it's not true, it's just there. It rises, and as soon as it arises, it's going, it's going, going. And you begin to realize it's not that much there to fear. And this is an important skill to develop, because think of all the ways that the mind forces itself to do things that it shouldn't do, or where other people force you to think, do things that you know you shouldn't do. It's out of fear, fear of pain. If you can train the mind to understand pain in such a way that you're not afraid of it, that means you're going to be free from that kind of influence. So we sit here with the pain, but not simply enduring it. You could gain awakening through enduring pain, as the John Chow once said, that all the chickens in the world would have gained awakening a long time ago. They can sit for hours, but they don't have any discernment. It's through the discernment that the mind learns how to free itself. 
you're seeing how you shape your experience in an unskillful way, and you can learn how to shape it in a more skillful way. It's like being a good cook. Bad cooks can take good ingredients and make horrible food. Good cooks can take ingredients that are not so good and yet make something good out of them. In the same way, there's, there may be the opportunity for pain, and that's part of the body. As soon as there's a body, there's an opportunity for pain. When we're born, we started out with pain. And pains have been coming and going ever since, and they're going to keep on coming and going. And as you get older, they get worse. But if you can understand the pain, you realize, okay, there may be pain in the body, but it doesn't have to pain the mind. It's the way we perceive the pain that creates the bridge between the physical pain and the mental pain. If you change the perceptions, you cut the bridge. And that way the mind is freed. <laughs>